Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And in this uh, video, we're going to discuss this 1991 Volkswagen Transporter Doka, or double cab. It's basically a double cab pickup on a uh, Vanagon chassis. Uh, these were never imported to North America. And of course, as soon as I start videoing, here comes a train. <laughs> I waited for the airplanes to fly over, and now here comes a train. Anyway, as usual, excuse all the background noise. So, this is a fairly rare vehicle in North America, as they were never imported to North America. Uh, but worldwide, they have a pretty big uh, following, especially in the Synchro incarnation, which is the all-wheel drive version. This was originally a 2.1 water boxer set up and um, what's kind of interesting about these these are like the classic uh, Chevy Suburbans in that it's a three door so you can see right here double cab but no door on the driver's side in the rear we'll take a look on the other side and you'll see that there's a, a passenger door on the on the back on the, on the rear cab part We'll do a little walk around here. So this is the passenger side. You can see it has a rear passenger door on the passenger side, which we didn't on the driver's side. And like I said, it's a pickup. Kind of neat thing about these was that the sides come down and so you can load this thing with uh, disconnect that you can load this thing from the side with a forklift and both sides go down as well as the rear also in the rear tailgate can go down and hang on these wires like a regular tailgate or it easily folds all the way down and long before others had a step on their tailgate Volkswagen had one help you get up into that bed there's also a rear cover here this one's looking a little worse for wear um, for access to the engine bay and there's also a deck lid here I'll show you in a second here and close this there's also lots of tie downs in the bed it's kind of nice but you can see there's a deck lid there which allowed access to the engine bay also so this, like I said, is a Volkswagen double cab pickup. They were called a transporter. And you can see that this one is electric. So there's a backstory on this one. We converted this to electric back in 2013. And it was originally intended to transport a mobility scooter in the rear. And so that the rear seat had been removed and this flat floor had been put in to allow for loading and transporting this mobility scooter. Well, what I was told was that it never was used for its intended purpose. And ended up sitting 
in the California desert for eight years. So what you're seeing today is this vehicle after having sat outside in the desert, Southern California desert for eight years and maybe even longer. I don't know how long I've been sitting out before it was converted, but I know what it looked like eight years ago after we converted it and uh, we actually delivered this one for the customer. There's a lot of special circumstances involved in this uh, project. And so we did a lot of uh, work and things that we don't normally do on a vehicle. And if you're interested in all of that uh, and more of the backstory, we did a complete series featuring this vehicle back in 2013. But as you see it today, it's just how we picked it up a few weeks ago. I was uh, notified that the vehicle um, needed to be moved and was asked to relocate the vehicle. And, um, and anyway, there's, there's a, a lot involved in all this. But anyway, we ended up going down to the desert, picking this vehicle up and bringing it to our, uh, our warehouse here for storage. And so it's sitting here till we have the opportunity to do a little uh, work on it. So I'm going to give you a little more of a close-up view in this video so you can see just, just, just what it looks like after having sat for eight years. It was used a little bit, but not very much. It mostly just sat. And we had a hard time rolling this thing because the tires had sat in one spot so long that did not want to move. And, uh, you know, you can see how faded the mirrors are. Uh, instead of being black, they're gray. Uh, some of the weather stripping is starting to dry out, so forth. Um, but amazingly, it's in pretty good shape. Um, it was under a shade tree. And the interior still looks, looks good. Uh, I think it looks very good all things considered. Um, one of the things that we did as part of the extras in this project was we had a spray-in bed liner put on it. The customer requested that we do that um, because, like I said, because of his circumstances. So we, we did that for him, found somebody that would do that. And because it was going to be in the desert, he didn't want black. He wanted a light color, so it turned out we found somebody. Nobody wanted to do anything other than black, and we're in a small rural area, but we found somebody who would do uh, this light gray. And so we had that done. And so you're gonna see what happens after eight years. Uh, for that, you can see the quality of job that they did. Uh, it's obvious that they did not prep things very well and so forth. Uh, the old test of time here. So basically, delivered this eight years ago, and you'll see if you, you know, revisit that series, this was a pretty clean ride. It was very nice, in my opinion. I, I always thought it would make a great shop truck. And then we fast forward eight years, and you see what just sitting and sitting in an environment like the desert will do. Luckily, it was dry, you know, so, uh, we basically haven't had you know a lot of rust issues but there have been some issues and we'll take a look at a few of those so we did a walk around the outside let's take a look at the inside we did look at the back uh, you know the back seat area so let's take a look at the front this is just as received I mean so we haven't cleaned this thing or anything what we did do was there were a lot of leaves in the bed and I raked those out and then we just hosed the, the vehicle off uh, because it was pretty dirty. But this is the inside, basically untouched. And so, another train. And so it doesn't look too bad. I, I was really impressed. Um, there's the operator's manual we provided. <laughs> Still with the vehicle here. 
Um, I mean, th this is uh, for 1991, and for having sat, it's it's. I think it's in an amazing condition. But let's take a look at the bed I mentioned. You know, we saw that the uh, this wooden cover is just rotted and gone, so that will have to be replaced. And you can see, you know, the dirt and staining from where leaves were sitting in this thing. And so that wasn't good. But there's lots of places like this where this is just bubbling up, coming loose. And that's just obviously, you know, because the surface wasn't properly prepared before this was applied. So anyway, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to try to clean this thing up a little bit. We'll pressure wash this bed, try to get a little bit cleaner. Um, give the vehicle a bath, get the topsoil off, and uh, and then we'll start our um, our diagnosis or diagnostics. The diagnosis diagnosis is that it doesn't run currently, and so I don't know when the last time this thing was operated. Uh, it's my understanding it's been a long time it's sat most of those eight years and so we're going to take a look at what has transpired as far as what's the condition after eight years what works what doesn't work uh, the thing doesn't move under its own own power and so we'll take a look at why so uh, Let's walk over to the other side here and we'll take a look at uh, the 12 volt auxiliary battery which is underneath the passenger seat. So when we arrived to pick up this vehicle, this battery right here was sitting on the floor back here. And I'm hooking up the terminals, that's the positive, that's the negative. And there was a little gauge here, and I'm like, wow, okay. The owner is out of the country, I believe, and so, you know, we didn't talk to him directly, um, so it wasn't really uh, conducive for asking questions and so forth, but we had a battery that we could stick in the vehicle. It doesn't fit properly, so we will... Uh, you know, get a replacement battery that fits the space uh, correctly. But for doing our testing, we have a 12 volt battery that was was there, and we'll use it. Not that I don't have lots of 12 volt batteries laying around, but this was just convenient to do a quick test. So we've hooked up the 12 volts, and so let's take a look at what's going on. We can see with the 12 volt battery hooked up. That our JLD 404 came on. Uh, the stereo is on. Um, turn that off. And so let's take a look at the pack voltage. Who knows the last time this was charged? So the pack voltage is showing 124.9. So let me do the math real quick and we'll see what the uh, cell voltage is. This conversion has uh, 38 cells, so I did the math, and we took 124.9 divided by 38. That shows we have 3.2868 volts per cell, um, and so if they're all reading the same, which we will check, but that would be right where we would expect. Um, that's, you know, that nominal voltage for this chemistry. These are lithium iron phosphate cells. And so that's, you know, that's a good sign. Always nice to know that our pack is where it should be. And so let's see what happens when we turn on the ignition. Anyway, we can see that it's pulling 
11.6 amps with the heater on with one element. We switch this to um, to high. Both elements come on. Now it's pulling a little over 20 amps. So I'm guessing the heater is working. Let's turn on the power steering, which is switched separately here. And it's pulling four amps. Well, not it all together, that's not additional. <laughs> so, steering seems to work fine. Turn that off. Well, it gets me, the thing's not running evidently, but we uh, no error codes. So, let's uh, take a look and see what happens when uh, I give it some throttle. If I can get things to focus again. There we go. I think the thing keeps wanting to focus on the stick shift, which is close, but not really in the picture. Anyway, I'm going to give it some throttle. So the motor's turning over, and it sounds like something's rubbing. Clunk, 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 clunk. But it doesn't want to spin very fast. Let's take a look at the RPMs here, let you see those. Not even registering RPMs. So might be an encoder issue. I don't know at this point. So what we'll do, let me turn the ignition off here. So what we'll do is we'll hook up the uh, Curtis dongle and take a look at what the uh, what the diagnostics say. This is an early system um, 2013 didn't realize you know when you're doing this every day you just don't realize the subtle changes but in eight years now the the controllers are all um, um, programmable from the menu switch and you can you know program them you can go into the diagnostics mode all of that uh, with just the 840 display and the menu switch with this early version, it was plug and play. There is no programming for the user. So that menu switch is only going to allow us to oscillate through the settings, your, your RPMs, your amps, your volts, um, motor temperature, controller temperature, um, and that's it. Pretty, uh, you know, Pretty meager by today's standards so but we have you know the Curtis um, test instrument programming instruments so we can go in and see what's going on with this thing so let's look at a few more items here after eight years what does the engine bay look like after eight years well let's take a look Pretty dusty and dirty in there. <laughs> it was sitting in the desert. And this guy had asked me about off-roading the thing, so I don't know. I don't know how the thing was used or anything else. There's the vacuum uh, pump in the corner there, vacuum reservoir, the 1238 controller. This is the AC75. Great motor in my uh, experience. I, I, I really like them. They were great for pickups. Um, vehicles that were heavier and had uh, you know, higher torque requirements. The AC75 was compatible with the AC or the uh, 1238. So the lower voltage setup and the, and the AC76 was compatible with the 1239, kind of like the AC50 and AC51. But this one put out, uh, I have to look and see if I can find the specs on it, but it put out a lot of torque at low RPMs. And this is the um, 
power steering setup in this, the original power steering pump was retained and we used a, a motor uh, to run the power steering and you very seldom use the power steering on this uh, because they're kind of light on the front end and they steer real easy but if you're pulling into a you know a parking spot or something something tight and you're not moving very fast or something you may want it. you just flip that switch and you instantly have nice you know very easy to steer power steering the power steering on this works very well and this is the original coolant reservoir that we uh, reused and um, I can see that the coolant is just down ever so slightly we can see the level in the tube right there is just down from its peak so everything you know amazingly looks pretty good for having eight years of of just sitting in the desert I'm surprised you know rodents didn't chew anything up or anything I mean things look pretty good <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll do some testing just wanted to give you the initial uh, you know view of things um, you can see right there I think there was one on the dash also this is converted completed September 2013 this is the end of June 2021 so one other thing we haven't looked at yet and that is in the treasure chest that's where the batteries are now the original setup with the rear seat there was a a uh, compartment enclosed compartment and the rear seat sat down on top of it so that was another spot that people could put batteries in one of these uh, so you could have a huge battery uh, you know box in this or you could just use the one under the rear seat which would move the weight even further forward and but this one because of its use as a utility vehicle you know where the back seat wasn't being used but, but uh, needed that space for the mobility scooter in this particular case and so I'm trying to grab the key here and so uh, that battery location was not an option then when we received the vehicle for conversion the seat bench and and that rear area had been removed already but we have what they call the treasure chest and this is an area just behind the cab and there's a door just like this one on both sides of the vehicle and goes completely across the vehicle it's a, a weather tight storage compartment that's locked and not as dirty and dusty in here Things look uh, pretty clean. Wow. Our straps are still as tight as can be. Wow. It's like a piano wire. Sweet. So these batteries, there's uh, uh, 38 cells and so they're on glides so these will come out for inspection and of course for installation and removal it was a very tight fit you can see clearances there were pretty close even had the notch just gusset to get clearance um, but these straps hold these things together so there, there's only one way these can move was you know out and, uh, and we tested this and you know the the owner went for a test drive with him he definitely tested it uh, it's one of only a couple times I've been a little scared riding with somebody else <laughs> so anyway uh, yeah still the, the cells being in this compartment they're clean and nice and everything smells new in there still wow eight years eight years I can't believe how nice and snug those straps are so what we'll do 
is uh, part of our testing. There is a spider web in here though, so spiders can get anywhere. Is that we will um, pull these uh, out and take a, a voltage reading on each individual cell and see what they are based on the math. Like I said, 3.28 I think it was which is exactly, we're bottom balancing a bunch of cells right now, which we're doing continually. Uh, and those are all, they're the same cell, they're a, a CALB 180 amp hour cell. And they arrive 50 to 60 percent state of charge, is what we're told. And I can tell you the voltage reading on all those is 3.28 volts. So exactly what these are. So we will take individual readings. We'll check the uh, interconnects uh, and see that everything is still nice and snug. You know, while you're there, do that kind of thing. Um, and so, in a in a in a in a future video, we'll show you all this kind of thing. Um, I notice the tires are starting to get a little bit cracked. Uh, I don't know if just on one side or both sides, but anyway, this one at a glance doesn't look too bad. But anyway, just thought this was kind of interesting. Here's a vehicle that uh, was converted eight years ago. Um, limited use, I believe, uh, but it sat in the Southern California desert for eight years, which takes its toll on everything but overall this thing looks pretty good everything appears to be working with the exception we not having the motor spin up and just off the top of my head a couple potential reasons for that uh, these have a external encoder on them so maybe an encoder issue um, throttle input issue I don't know that rubbing concerns me more than anything else but um, you know we won't know until we do some tests and then of course we're gonna pull this motor out of the vehicle and check to see what uh, what's going on. Is it uh, a flywheel rubbing? Uh, you know, that's a potential. It it, it could be in you know the motors rubbing internally, uh, where the the uh, armature is rubbing the stator, or could be the flywheel rubbing the bell housing. Um, those are the two things that. Uh, you know, possibilities come to mind. So, right now, those are just, you know, assumptions of what could be wrong. So, we will be doing some testing. And depending on my, you know, uh, <laughs> the timing of everything, uh, I, 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 I might uh, film that and bring you along. Um, like I said the other thing that I noticed was that we must have a vacuum leak because the vacuum pump was cycling and it shouldn't it should pump up to pressure and stay there most our conversions you pump them up you come back days later they're still pumped up but sometimes in older vehicles um, I'm leaning towards it's probably the hose that goes from the rigid line that goes forward uh, and then so from that rigid line to the uh, vacuum booster up front that's a flexible hose we replaced the one on the um, uh, 1972 VW bus that we've been showing recently uh, that was the issue on that one another issue that we see in these older vehicles is the booster itself leaks a little bit and so the diaphragm in there can crack and so that's probably what it is, but not necessarily. But until you do the testing, you don't know. And so we will methodically test all these things to find out 
exactly what the issues are. So until then, I hope you have a, a, a good day and that you'll join us when we come back and check this out. See you then.